Let's close the eyes and find your most naturally comfortable sitting posture. Become aware of the spine, tall vertical spines. So the intention always is to maintain a good posture. Pull the neck up, head up toward the ceiling, tailbone down. This is just to get a feel for the spine being lengthened, elongated, no strain. Head, neck, trunk, nicely aligned. <clears throat> Making sure there is no discomfort of any kind. Allow the hands to rest very comfortably on your knees or your thighs. If the shoulders up to the ears, roll them back. Let them hang loose. Very comfortable arms <clears throat> and shoulders. Do a few gentle neck movements, move up and down, side to side. Circular movements or any other random movement. Just feel the neck muscles and these movements should help you release any kind of subtle tightness in the neck area. Gentle movements. And finally, bring the head back to the center. Chin just slightly below the horizontal level. That should give you a nice alignment of the head, neck, and the spine. And very comfortable head and neck and shoulders. Soften the facial muscles and relax the jaws. Begin to watch your breath now as you breathe in, as you breathe out. Observe the flow at the tip of the nose, just monitoring the flow, not modifying the natural rhythm. No effort to control your breath in any way. Natural breaths, just become aware of the flow from the tip of the nose all the way down through the bronchial cavity into the lungs. When you inhale, when you exhale from the lungs out through the nose, just follow the flow mentally as if you're able to feel and watch that flow all the way from the tip of the nose to the the lungs. With every inhalation and exhalation, you might feel a very subtle chest movement. So become aware of the flow, become aware of the filling of the lungs, and become aware of the flow, the movement, the subtle chest movement. Recite Om three times now. Deep inhalation. Om. Oh. Oh.
quickly, softly, open the eyes. <clears throat> Must everyone and welcome. Welcome to day number five. Day number five of this journey together into, let's call it self-exploration. We are exploring our inner universe. You, you are not, normally we are only focused on the outer universe and what's happening outside of us. The people bothering us, we need this, that, and everything, you know. So there is a lot of stuff going on outside, but we don't pay much attention to what's going on inside, but there is a there's a, there's a, there's a whole replica of the entire out, outside universe inside us. In fact, what we outside is based on just a reflection of what's inside us. Everyone knows that, right? You look at a flower, everyone looks at a flower. What you think about the all the flower is based on entirely what's inside of you. You might like it, dislike it. Might want to smell it, you may want to throw it away, you know, everything depends on what's inside. So it is a great opportunity to explore that inner universe. Self exploration leads to self realization. <laughs> okay, so that's what we're doing here. All right. Okay, oh, this is the eye, <clears throat> eye exercise. Circular rotation. Keep the head in the center, spine up, look up, and move the eyes in a full circle clockwise. Smooth and continuous movement of the eyes. No head movement, just the eyes. Creating a very large circle without causing strain. When we stretch the eyes to make a large circle, we are exercising the muscles of the eyes. Keeping the eye muscles strong and healthy. Next time you bring the eyes to the top, center them and close. Relax for a moment. Open the eyes, look up, and then move the eyes in the opposite direction. Full circle, large circles, smooth movements, stretching the eyes. Strong and healthy eye muscles. Maintaining good lubrication of the eyes, preventing dryness, etc. Next time you bring the eyes to the top, center them and close. And let's rub the palm briskly. Cover the eyes softly with the palms. <clears throat> Should help us relax the eyes, eye muscles. And we'll just lightly. Rub the eyelids, eyebrows, gentle massage, forehead, sides, just to soften these muscles in this area. No tension, cheeks, neck and the throat. And release now. Once again, softly open the eyes. All right. So, you are reading of the Gita, Bhagavad Gita. This is still under the same theme of 
what's called karma yoga. Have you remember what karma yoga is? We've talked about it last couple of days. What's karma yoga? No idea? Action. 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 What kind of action? Selfless action. Okay, that's karma yoga. Let me read this. We'll understand it better. <clears throat> Tyatva karma phala sangam nitya tripto nirashraya karman nyabhi pravritto pi naiva kinchit karoti saha. This is pretty much the definition of karma yoga. He, <clears throat> he who gives up attachment to action and their fruits is independent and ever content. Such a person, though engaged in activity, does nothing at all and incurs no karmic reaction. Can you get some sense of what it is saying? <laughs> yes, no? What are we trying to say? It's a very deep, you know, statement, take a lot of understanding, reflection to understand what it is all saying. But the main theme is, look, we're doing actions, right? All the time, we're doing something or the other. Right? Go to work, we, we do work for our family, we do shopping, we do all kinds of projects, we play sport, we play music, listen to music, and enjoy stuff. Point is, how attached we are, okay. both to, to the work what, that we do and to what we expect out of that, of that work, right? That attachment is that what she is talking about. So when we say karma yoga, it is doing action without any attachment. No attachment to the karma that you're doing, if you're working, you know, people say, this work is my life. I have nothing else to do. You know, I, I am nobody with, without my work. That's attachment. I'm nobody without my family. That's attachment. I have absolutely nothing to live for if I, you know, don't have a child. That's attachment. So, first of all, do action without attachment. Then, when you do the action, you expect some outcome out of it, right? It's okay to expect something because that might drive you to do better, better work. But what comes as a result, no attachment to that. Accept it, happy. Hard, <laughs> like I said, but that's the message and that will give you a total sense of a peace of mind. That's what you're looking for, all right? Okay, let's move on. Get ready with our stretching. Everyone ready? Get the body going. All right, come up on your hands and knees. Always start with Marjara. Marjara is the Sanskrit word for a male cat. If you like female cat, you can call it the Marjari Asana. It's your choice. Spread the fingers wide. Flat palms. Shoulders are vertically above the hand, knees under the knees under the hips. Lift the head up as you inhale. Tailbone up. Dip the navel down. Exhale round the spine. Lift the navel up. Create a little hump in the spine. Chin down. Couple more. Nice smoothly flowing movement. The next exhalation, bring the spine back to the 
neutral position momentarily. Your breaths here. Give a little variation here. So left hand. Everyone show me the left hand. Right leg. Everyone show the right leg. Lift it up and then fold the knee. Bring the hand behind you and grab the right ankle. So left hand holding the right ankle, right? And lift the foot up higher, chest up higher. Push the foot back into the hand to lift the knee up higher behind you. Pulling the foot up, knee up higher, your head up, chest up. Great stretch. Slowly come down. Pause briefly. The other side, right hand, left leg. Hold the ankle, push the foot back and with the hand to lift the foot up higher, knee up higher, chest up, head up. That's good, yeah, you're almost there. <laughs> I know it's in there. That's fine. Yeah, just do the variation. That's fine. And slowly release. Come down. Minor variations of these poses will help stress the muscles in different ways. That's what we're trying to do all the time. Sit up. In the Vajrasana, if comfortable. If not, any other asana is okay. You do the practice of Kapala Bhati. Always start with that. It's an energizing practice and cleansing practice. Purifying. All right, let's go ahead. Breath out, belly in. Start moving. Final exhalation, and just you're bringing back to your natural rhythm of breathing. And you're ready for some Surya Namaskar, sun salutation. Let's come up to a standing position. Go to the top of the mat, feet together, as always, or just only slightly apart, maybe an inch or two. They should be nicely parallel. Body should be tall, roll the shoulders up and back. Just feel that nice openness of the chest. Body should be relaxed. Exhale, palms together. Inhale, arms in front, up and back. Pull the hands up and push them back. Look up. As you exhale, begin to bend forward. Keep the hands pulled away initially. Finally, drop the hands. Get the hands closer to the toes. And the knees, palms down, left foot back. Slide the foot back, knee down, buttocks down, chest down. Right foot back. 
downward facing dog. Try to lift the buttocks up toward the ceiling. At the same time, press the heels down toward the floor. <clears throat> Look at your knees or your feet. Chin is against the chest. Press the knees, chest, and chin down. Ashtanga mudra. Eight limbs are on the floor. Not the belly. And let's slide the knees a little backwards. Slide the knees slightly back. That's better, yes. Then now lower the abdomen down, head up, chest up, palms up, bring your hands behind the back, interlock the fingers, pull the hands back and away, lift the hands up toward the ceiling, lift the chest higher, legs higher, shoulders are rolled back. And you're trying to pull the hands backwards and upwards. And then release the hands, palms down, right next to the chest. Go back to the downward facing dog. And up, left foot forward. Back. Start with the left. So whichever foot goes back, that's the foot that comes in front. Knee down, right knee down. Yes, down. Right foot forward. Then a straight. Together. And then if you feel comfortable, drop the chest when you exhale. So you lift the head up, bring the arms in front against the ears, L shape. So pull the hands away and then start raising the arms up as you inhale, up and back. And then as you exhale, straighten the body, release the arm, relax. Sun salutation, Surya Namaskar. What's the literal meaning of Namaskar? Nama. The word Nama means bow down. Bending, bowing down. That's Nama. And kara just simply means the act of doing something, right? Kara. Right? So the act of bowing down. To who? The sun. Surya. Sun. All right? Why do we do that? It's a tradition, right? Sun worship has been a practice which is not only in India, but many other cultures, they do their sun worship because sun is the source of life, source of energy, source of everything. Sun worship is a very common kind of practice for many cultures. But the big, big thing in India, as we all know, Surya Namaskar. Okay? Okay. Next song, feet together. Exhale, palms together. <clears throat> Inhale, arms out to the side, up and back. Pull the hands up and backwards. Press the feet down a little more firmly. So you can really press, feel that heels really firmly pressing down. Then push the thighs forward. One more effort to lift the hands up toward the ceiling and then push them back. And then as you exhale, bend forward. <clears throat> Drop the hands and bring them behind the back now. Interlock the fingers, roll the shoulders back. And as you inhale, make an effort to lift the hands up and away. So you're really pulling the hands away from you toward the ceiling. Nice shoulder rotation, chest expansion. And as you exhale, close the gap with the thighs. And slowly release the hands, bend the knees, arms down, right foot back, triangle pose. So oh, everyone should have a block. Please have a block entry. Everyone get a block. Mm -hmm. 
Get a block, get a block. Yeah. All right. Triangle pose. Remember, we did the triangle pose yesterday. Body should be parallel to the side wall. Left foot is straight out. Legs are wide apart. Left hand on your thigh. Raise the right arm up. Keep it vertical. And then slide the hand down the leg. As much as comfortable, use a block in front so that you can. Feel that stretch in the leg. You put it here like this. Okay. Step, come up, come up, let go. Only bend this way. Yes. Sideways. Variana, you bend it in this front. No. Only sideways. Yeah, only this way. Yep, yep, yep. Sideways only. No forward bend. See, you can bring it a little bit forward. Side. So, yeah, that's good. Beautiful. Now slowly release the hand, you will do a variation called the Parshwatthanasana. Let me show you. So here, both the legs are straight. We're going to place the hand on the thigh. Chest should be on top of the thigh. Right hand in front, right hand. And then slide the hands down. Go as far as you can. If you can get to the floor, that's fine. If not, keep the hand on your leg wherever they reach. This leg is straight, very straight. Back leg is straight. And you're trying to draw the chest on top of the thigh now. Chest on the thigh. Right hand in front. I'm going to do a little more challenging pose here. It's called the revolving triangle. So move your block on the outside of the foot now, on the outside of the foot. And place the right hand on the foot, on, on, on the floor or the, or the block. Left hand goes up all the way. Little more challenge. This block is here now. That's right. Beautiful, yeah. No, 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 no. This hand goes up. That hand is here. From the other side. That's right. Beautiful, yeah. Little more challenge, like I said. All right, release. Come down. And the knee, palms down, left foot back, downward facing dog. Push the buttocks up, push the thighs backwards. Push the heels down. Bring the knees down to the floor, this time buttocks all the way back. Into the child pose, balasana. Buttocks are resting on the heels, forehead on the floor, and then you walk your hands away. Hands moving away from you. You try to push the buttocks back and downwards. And once again, if you just want to watch the movement, you want to make sure the hands don't move, forehead stays close to the floor, and then smoothly we're going to try. And bring the body up into the cobra pose. Smooth. Move up. Chest up. Navel is still down. Elbows are bent. Elbows bent. Very close to the body. Yep, very, very nice. Navel down. Chest up. Shoulders roll back. It's called the cobra or the bhujangasana. Let's go back to the downward facing dog. And lift the head up, bring the left foot, I mean right foot forward, sorry, right foot up. Come up for the triangle pose. The right foot is straight out, legs are straight, the body is completely parallel to the side walls. So there's hips, knees, and ankles all in one line. Place the right hand on the thigh. Left arm should go up vertical and then slide the hand down the leg. Let me show you're bending. Sideways only, no forward bend at all. Complete sideways. Anugya, I'm going too far forward. Come on, straight first, come on. Now, raise this arm up. Only in this plane now. 
Don't bend forward. You already have a tendency to bend forward. Don't bend forward. Slowly release. Bring the hands on your thigh. It's called the Parshvottanasana. Okay, left hand in front. Left hand should be ahead of the right. And chest should be right on top of the thigh. Slide the hands down as much as you can. Keep the legs very straight if you can. And then chest should come up right on top of the thigh. Chest is right on top of the thigh. And now release the, uh, bring the, the block, block to the other side, place the left hand on the outside of the foot, right hand goes up vertical. Legs are still straight here. This is the revolving triangle. Parivritta Trikonasana. That's good. It's challenging. And slowly release the, come down, palms down. Left foot forward. Get on the legs, feet together, bend over. Head up, arms out to the side as you inhale up and back. Pull the hands up toward the ceiling, push them back. And then as you exhale, straighten the body, release the arms down, relax them. You know, like you have noticed, many of these poses are challenging for at least for some who have never done these before, right? You want to make sure that, first of all, you're very, very aware of what's going on in the body. Every, like I said, every variation that we do, every, every pose that we do engages muscles. <laughs> Sometimes we feel that they have never been used, okay? But we want to be careful. Never doing anything over, okay, beyond, beyond your own capability. At the same time, make an effort by just trying to find the, follow the guidelines, all right? So effort is there, no force. And slowly, as you keep practicing, the body begins to learn. You know, body learns, right? And it'll learn a little more and then get into the pose eventually, all right? So be careful. All right, feet together. Exhale, palms together. Inhale on in front, up and back. Pull the hands up and push them back and look up. Exhale, bending forward. Slowly drop the hands, drop the chest, get the hands close to the toes or the floor on the sides, and get the chest close to the thighs. Bend the knees, palms down. Left foot back, slide the foot back, leg is straight in the third round. Very straight leg, push the heel back. Chest up, buttocks are down. Keep the lower the buttocks a little bit more. Buttocks down, a little bit more. Head up, yes, beautiful, yep. Right foot back, plank position. Plank is where the body is into a straight line now. Very straight. So the buttocks are in complete straight line with the heels and shoulders. Shoulders vertically above the hands. Fingers are spread out wide. Palms feel flat and firm. Knees, chest, chin down. Release the abdomen. Head up, chest up. This time I'll with a straight. Upward facing dog. Point the toes back, press the, the top of the feet, lift the knees up. Knees are up, but the buttocks are still down. But the downward facing dog. Head up, left foot forward, bring it up between the palms. Nice. The right heel back, very straight leg. No, you have pushed the heel back, straight leg. Buttocks down, buttocks down. Right foot forward. 
straight in the legs, feet together. And if you feel comfortable, you can try and drop the chest when you exhale. Head up, arms in front against the ears. And as you inhale, stretch up and back. And as you exhale, straighten the body. Release. Relax now. What date is today? 20? 16. 16. 16. 16. You know, I'm just thinking of you know, this uh, International Yoga Day, right? It's coming up on the 21st. That's always, always the 21st of June is called the International Day of Yoga. So most people end up doing a lot of Surya Namaskars that day. <laughs> 108. Hmm? 108. <laughs> so, uh, Keep practicing. We will end up doing maybe at least 12, maybe 18 if the time permits. Okay. That way. <laughs> 20. You remind me though, because I might forget. 21st, remember that's the day of yoga. Okay. Let's do the balancing pose. We call we'll do the pose called the Natrajasan. Everyone knows who Nataraj was, right? Shiva. 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 All right. So Nataraj Asana, let me just show you quickly. Uh, from the back. So the idea is to lift the foot behind, and not from the outside. Hold it from the inside if you can. All right. They will raise the other arm up. Keep it up there and then bend forward. As you bend forward, you're going to lift the foot up and knee up behind. You. Okay. That's the idea. Yeah, let's give it a try. Back, 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 back. Yes. Not in front. And keep the body eventually perfectly parallel to the floor. Look at the spot in front to maintain balance. If you need the wall for support, face the wall. You know, use the hand for support against the wall. That's right. That's much better. Very nice. Natraj Asana. Slowly come down. Pause briefly, relax. On the other side. Hold from the inside if you can. Arm up. Stay against the ear. And then Bend over. Face the wall, completely face the wall when you use the wall for support. You cannot do it sideways. And slowly release and come down. You'll be better off using a strap in future for this pose. You just wrap like this. Okay. Then do this. Part. It might help you. It's better. Lie down on your abdomen, face down. So every day trying to do slightly different variations of the different poses. Engaging different muscles, muscle groups, more awareness of the body at all levels. Anurasana, bow pose, forehead down, bend your knees, hold the ankles. Lift up. Slowly, head up, chest up. Very nice. Push the feet back so that you can set the thighs as well as lift the knees up. Slightly. Beautiful. There you go. So 
Slowly come down. Keep holding onto the ankles. We always do it twice. For the second round, bring the feet together and the knees together now. See if you can do that. Or as close as you can get. Yes. And then lift up. Chest up. Roll the shoulders back. Push the feet back into the hands. Knees may come up higher. Release and let go. Just relax for a moment. Just come up on the elbows. We're going to the plank position. So curl the toes under. Push with the toes to lift the buttocks up. Knees up. So the body becomes completely parallel to the floor. But as are not lifted up, you are not dropping down. Very straight body, parallel to the floor. It's called the plank on the forearms. Okay. We'll try and hold this pose for some time. Maybe till, till the end of the class, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> just this pose today. Now, just a few seconds. That's fine. Building up a lot of core strength, shoulders, elbows, everything. Getting strong, stronger here. Spine. Push the heels back. Very yeah, slowly release them. Come down. Relax. So you roll over onto your back. Bring the feet together, stretch the arms back overhead. Get a nice stretch. We'll pull the hands back and away. Point the toes away. It's called the yashtikasana. Yashtik is a stick, a rod. And as you exhale, come up to a sitting position. As you will realize, 21 days, days is a very small period of time, you know. Yoga is a very vast subject, right? Just the asana practice, if you start doing, you'll see how many variations, you know, you can introduce, how many asanas they can practice. My idea is to just kind of give you an exposure at this point, right? Everyone, not everyone is going to be able to do every pose that we try, but get an exposure and then slowly work on these Asana, you know, if, uh, you notice everything is being recorded. You can use these recordings later on to go over something that you that you want to practice on. All right. Don't feel intimidated. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Sometimes you might feel a little overwhelmed, but stay with the flow. Okay. A variation of the Janu Shirshasana. It's called Akarana. Karana is the Sanskrit word for ears. A means in the direction of. So Akarana means we're going to bring the foot in the direction of the ear. All right. Let's start with the right leg. Hold the leg and then put this, this sole of the foot on the inside of the elbow. All right. Inside of the elbow. Okay. Now, the effort is going to be to bring this big toe and connect it with the, with the ear, okay? Again, like I said, it doesn't matter if it doesn't work. At the same time, you're going to bend forward. So place the right hand on the thigh and slide the hand away as much as you can. But this effort is to bring this foot closer and closer to the ear and then bend forward. 
Don't push yourself. This could be intense if the body is not flexible enough at this point. Bring the foot to the ear and bend forward at the same time. Right hand in front. No, no, right hand on this. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Very nice. Called the Akaranasana. Diti, you want to switch the arms or switch the legs first. That's okay. You can switch the arms now. That's right. Yes. And come down. Slowly release. Come out. Call me. Akaranasana. Ah, the word ah in Sanskrit simply means in the direction of or towards something. So bring the foot to the ear. All right. Stick the other leg. Put the sole of the foot on the inside of the elbow first. Inside. And then this hand will go in front. The effort will be to bring this foot closer and closer to the ear. That's the whole idea here. Close the gap between the foot and the ear. And then slide forward if you can, you bend forward at the same time. You need deep stretch, very, very careful. So don't overdo any of these movements. You can hurt if you're not careful. That's good. That's good. Don't. Okay. Let's release. It's going to. Prashant, I'm just looking at your expression. Avoid that expression, please. That's not what we want. That's exactly what I was saying. Indian. If you don't mind, I'm going to show you what his expression was. Okay? <laughs> so this is his position. That's, that's how he started. Okay, So he was smiling at this point, looking at his wife, and he was smiling. And then he, he brought his foot in front, a little bit higher. And from this smile, <laughs> That's what his expression was. Don't want to get there. <laughs> Have you get the picture? Yes. <laughs> Keep that smile, please. Okay. <laughs> Maintain the smile no matter where you are in your practice. <laughs> okay. In this asana, what is it? Or, hmm? Where do you really need to stretch it? Where do you? What is it for the stretch more? Everybody is different, right? Yes, sir. So you, you define your own experience, basically. You know, if, if, I, if I do this stretch, I'm feeling the stretch in my hip. I'm feeling the stretch in my knee. When I lift it higher, this whole body, this whole outside is getting stretched. When I bend forward, I'm getting a beautiful spinal twist also now, right now. It's a twisting stretch also. Okay, a lot of different areas and everybody is different. Okay, but yeah. You feel the stretch in many different areas. Predominantly, it's, it's a lot of hip stretch, outside of the thigh stretch, knee stretch. That's mainly the areas. So, Subhashi, also for me, um, in the mornings, I'm more stiff, and in the yeah. evenings, I get better, you know. That's very true. <laughs> it up. Yeah, morning, since you've had a nice rest, your body is very stiff in the morning. That's right. During the day, you are active, you're moving around, so your body is a bit loose. So, yeah, it's, that's very true. Pretty, pretty common, uh, Hirukma. Not uncommon at all. Okay. Keep together, legs are straight, raise the arms up as you inhale, Paschimottanas. X, and forward. Use a strap if your hands do not reach the toes. The reason we use the strap is because it gives two things. One thing, it makes you more aware of the spine because you want to maintain nice and tall, lengthened spine, not rounding the spine. And to do that, pull the chin away when you inhale. And then drop the chest when you exhale. So it, with the strap, you are able to close the gap between the hands and the feet. Keep sliding the hands toward the feet. Feet and that will give you a deeper stretch. So that strap is very helpful in that sense. And then as you inhale, raise the arms up. 
to exhale, release. Ah, that's all right. Ready for a brief Sarvangasana, shorter stand. So remember, shorter stand, those who need the wall for support should position themselves against the wall. Those who are comfortable without the wall, go ahead and get going. I think everyone knows the routine now. You need the support, get close to the wall. You need the wall. I'm not doing it. No, 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 that's good. If women are going through monthly cycles, do not do it. Very nice. Now bring the feet closer to my shoulder. This is your final position, right? Okay. Not today. All right. I'm going to leave now. Good activity you want to do. Don't go for yourself. That's fine. So I'm just telling you this is where you eventually will be. Lie down. Lie down. Push no, no. the knees. Push the ball. Don't move this slightly body. Just lift the other side. Push the ball. That's it. Keep lifting, keep lifting, keep lifting. Place the hands behind you. Lift the buttocks up higher. Only one leg at a time if you want to try. Not only the best. Otherwise, no. this is where you will build the strength and stand on now. You can stay here in this position. Very nice. And lower both the legs all the way back. Behind you now, into the halasana, plow pose. All the way back. Behind you. If you come out of the pose very slowly, release the back first. And when the tailbone touches the floor, legs are vertical, then release the legs down. Sarvangasana, shoulder stand. Lie down on your back. You do the fish pose or the matsyasana. So come up on the elbows. Place the palms under the buttocks. That helps the spine when you place the palms under. Roll the shoulders back, lift the chest up, and then release the head down. Head should be resting on the floor, not hanging in the air. Chest is up. Slide the elbows closer to the feet to lift the, to roll, roll the head down. And then finally, when you will be Chest lifted up. In the final position, you may lift the feet as well, about three inches above the ground. Deepening the stretch in the core area, the spine, the abdominal area, inner thighs. Come out of the pose, bring the feet down, bring the palms out from under the buttocks, sit back up on the elbows, lower the chin down, chest, and then smoothly release the back down, shoulders down, head down, and relax there. Bend the knees, wrap the arms around the knees. Hug the knees to the chest. And then slowly roll the body sideways. When you do that, your head is on the floor. Your tailbone is on the floor.
Next time you're back to the center, pause briefly, and then begin to rock the body. Down. And come back up to this. Spinal twisting pose. Does anybody remember what we did yesterday for the spinal twist? Anybody? Marichasana. Hmm? Marichasana. Marichasana. Yes, Marichasana. <laughs> Named after the sage Rishi Marichi. Remember, there are two names like similar sounding Marichi and Marich. Marich. <laughs> Marich. Marich was a bad guy. <laughs> he was a sage. Sage. So have a strap handy, as we remember, we always use a strap in this pose. So we are going to bring the foot all, all the way back on the same side. Okay, start with the right foot. That's that we always do the same thing. Arm on the inside, upper arm, palm facing outwards. Right, right, from inside out. No, no, this way. No, keep it. Grab the hands behind the corner. All right, good. Very good. This arm goes like this. Hold it here. Hold it here. Hold it here. This way. Hold it here. Outside, face the back. Keep the palm facing this. Now hold it. Keep it that way. Hold it. Show the back. All right. Yes. This side. Palm facing. No, no. Come outside. That's right. The other hand behind. Hold it together. Beautiful. Okay. You got it. All right. Release. Come back. Let me just show you one more time the other side now. Just some of you are not very clear. They move. See, the movement is, in my case, the right leg is straight out. And you're going to bend the knee and bring the heel all the way back to the groin area. Okay? Now, my left knee is bent. Left arm, we're going to raise it up. And then bring it on the inside of the knee. Now, the palm is facing away from you, outwards. You can bend slightly forward, which will give you a little more move, room for movement. Wrap the arm around. And then grab the hands behind you. On the other side. All right, use a strap. That's where you'll use a strap. That's good. Beautiful. Almost there. Almost there. Palm should be this way. That will be more smooth. Very good. Yes. Good. Good. If you want to try this stretch, you bring this hand behind you. Oh, bring this arm up. Yes, that's it. That's all you want. Just a little more finally and release now. Back to the center. <laughs> that should be the next one. Uh, where should we put the next one? Straight or up? 
respect. Excuse me. All right, sit down comfortably with the eyes closed now. Moment of reflection. <clears throat> Reflecting back, looking for any sign, will the mind try to push the body around or the body refuse to even try? When the mind is driven by the ego, it doesn't do the right thing. That's what we want to avoid. Putting the hands. Behind the back, softly hold the right wrist. And as you exhale, bend forward. Go as far as you can, stay there for a moment now. And with the next inhalation, slow, smooth, come back up. Release. I'm ready for yoga nidra. Deep relaxation. If you lie down on your back, we always get ready for our sequence to tighten the muscles in the body. And we do that. Optionally, by coming into the half boat. That means you lift the feet up, head up, if comfortable. If not, don't bother. <clears throat> Stay with the head down, feet down. Lift up. And then legs are straight, point your toes away, arms straight in front, spreading the fingers wide and tight. So tighten the hands, fist with the hands, tight fists, rotate. One direction of rotation. Pause. Other direction of rotation. Pause. Keep the elbow straight. Fists are tight. We'll work on the facial muscles. Open the mouth. Extend the tongue out. Curl it down to the chin. Eyes open. Tighten the facial and the neck muscles. Pull the fists away from you toward the feet. Squeeze the buttocks tight, thighs, knees, kneecaps, calf muscles tight, ankles. Point the toes away. One last effort now, engaging every muscle in the body, top to bottom. Toes to head, squeeze tight, and let go. Loosening up now completely. <clears throat> let the body find its own naturally comfortable position. Spread the feet apart if that's comfortable. Hands away, palms facing up. Body in the most naturally relaxed posture. Go through our sequence, relax the body. Start by relaxing the toes, soles of the feet, heels, ankles. Calf muscles, <clears throat> shins, knees, kneecaps, thighs, pelvic area, all the abdominal muscles, 
visualize and relax the internal organs. Heart, lungs, kidneys, and the liver. <clears throat> That's the rib cage, chest, shoulder blades, collarbones. Shift your awareness in the hands, relax the fingers. Arms, wrists, forearms, elbows, upper arms, and relax the shoulders, buttocks, full length of the spine. <clears throat> All the muscles in the back, neck muscles, all the facial muscles, cheeks, chin, lips, <clears throat> claws, tongue, teeth, nose, Eyes, eyebrows, forehead, top of the head, and back of the head. Very deeply relaxed state of the body. Every muscle feels very nice and loose, comfortable. Just become aware of all the points of contact between the body and the floor. Let the body gently sink into the floor. Very deep state of relaxation. And to enjoy this state of relaxation, we'll set the intention that while we're relaxing, thoughts will come up, we know that, but we will simply ignore the thoughts, pay no attention. Thoughts will come and go away. That way we can continue to enjoy this very nice, beautiful state of the body and the mind.
Bring the awareness back to the breathing and begin to breathe slightly deeper breaths now. Just becoming aware of the flow and rhythm of your breath. For a moment, just feel the flow at the tip of the nose as the breath flows in and out. And then slowly begin to stretch the fingers, curl the toes, stretch the hands, feet, arms and legs. You can stretch the arms back overhead, get a good stretch. And slowly roll to one side for a brief moment. Come back up, sitting posture. Okay. Ready for our pranayama practice. Breathing. Mm -hmm. Comfortable sit in the Vajrasana. We'll start with Kapalabhati as we always do. Sit in any posture that's comfortable for you. You're okay, Alex, without the bolster? Yes, I'm fine. Good. <laughs> Very nice. Okay. I'm going to. Shift the speed from now to 75 today. Just a notch higher. All right. How very Deep to use your hands through the navel. You use the hands to push the movement is. That's because we want to slow down a little bit, we're going a little fast. It's okay, we're doing perfectly fine. Try to maintain a nice uniform rhythm, we'll slow down. Okay. The final exploration and the natural rhythm of reading. All right. The practice is called Kapala Bhati. Kapala is the source skull area. The word Bhati means to shine. To Different meanings: shine, glow, radiate. Uh, you know, as I mentioned, Kapalabhati in the text called the Pradipika. You know, there are different categories of, of practices. Asana practice is one category. Pranayama is one category there, and there's a category of cleansing practices, which are supposed to cleanse the internals of the body. Okay? So this practice of Kapalabhati is actually listed under cleansing practices. We're doing a lot of detoxification. Is it so it's good with Ujjayi or the... No, 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 no. Kapal is all nasal breath, not Ujjayi. Ujjayi breath is only for breaths, for practices which involve long breaths, deep breaths, long. This is a short breath. This is a short and very fast breath. No Kapal, no Ujjayi in this one. Okay. Remember, Ujjayi is only for long breaths. 
All right. Next, we'll do a practice called Bhastrika. Now, in the Kapal Bhati, we did only focus on exhalation. Inhalation, we allowed it to happen passively. It was just happening every time we exhale. In Bhastrika, we force both inhalation and exhalation. This becomes a little more intense practice now. Uh, with one word of caution, as always, for this practice, not to be done by anybody who has blood pressure problems. That means you are on medication for blood pressure, hypertension, and, and still you have fluctuations in your blood pressure. Some days it is one number, next day it is a different number. If that's the case, avoid this practice, okay? Don't, because it's a pretty intense practice. Otherwise, it's a beautiful practice. Again, very cleansing, very detoxifying, very energizing. You can feel a heat in the system. All right? So the practice involves moving the arms up and down. So you're going to throw the arms up when you inhale and throw them down when you exhale. Throw them. My shoulders are not good enough for throwing the arms. You know, so eventually, you will bring them arms up, but forcefully. Like I said, I cannot throw them up. You will follow along with Jessica's movements. All right, so this is the starting position. Inhale, up, exhale, down, up, down. Inhale, exhale, up, down. Keep going. Close, both inhale and exhale, make a sound. Open palm, open palm, don't move up. Yeah. Final exhalation and release now. And you can yourself feel it's a very energizing practice. You can almost feel this, this sense of heat being generated in the system. Very detoxifying, cleansing practices. Called, what's the name? Bhastrika. B-H-A-S-T-R-I-K. T-R-I-K-A, Bhastrika. Bhastrika is the Sanskrit word for bellows. Uh, some of you may not remember the bellows. You know, these were the gadgets people used in the old days uh, to ignite fire. <laughs> you know, all the goldsmiths and ironsmiths, you know, they will have this gadget. Used to be made of animal skin, actually, in those days. Okay, and then you would pump like this in and out, so it really generate a lot of forceful air, so fight with the fire will be ignited. That's plastic. So that's exactly what we're doing with the lungs, using the you know this movement. So the lungs are getting pumping in and out very rapidly and forceful. It's creating the same movement as the, as the bellows. A lot of heat being generated. Same thing. Okay. So now Kapal Bhati Bhastrika. Now there is another practice which engages the deep breathing. Now that's where the Ujjayi breathing will come. The name of this practice is Ujjayi Pranayama. Okay. Always you have to distinguish between these two terms. One is the Ujjayi breathing technique, which is simply the practice where you Constrict the passage here and feel that sound, subtle hissing sound. That's Ujjayi breathing technique. Now, using this technique, we have a whole practice called the Ujjayi Pranayama. So, let me guide you through that practice. It gets a little confusing in the beginning. We'll make it clear. All right. So, the practice is to in to do the full three-part breathing. Remember, we did the three-part breathing. When we inhale, we fill the belly out, expand the chest, lift the collarbones up. That's one deep inhalation. When you exhale, the opposite. Soften the upper chest, middle chest. Finally, deep cavity here when you exhale. Suck the belly back in. That's the whole process of inhalation and exhalation. All deep breaths should follow this practice, three-part breathing, all deep breaths. Now, in this practice, what we'll do is to breathe in through both the nostrils. So it look like this. 
At the end of inhalation, you're going to hold the breath. Don't breathe for some time. At that time, you're going to lower the chin down, press the chin on the sternum while we're holding the breath. So we know we have inhaled and now hold the breath. So you'll have the urge to exhale at some point very soon, right? When you have the urge to exhale, lift the chin back up. Don't keep it down. Everyone show me your right hand. Take your fist, thumb up, last two fingers up, Vishnu Mudra. Everyone got that? All right? With the right hand, you're going to close the left nostril with the ring finger, left nostril. Close the left nostril. Okay. Hold on. Take it back. Take it back. I was doing the other practice. No. Yeah. Take it back. Sorry. Okay, Vishnu Mudra, right thumb. Close the right nostril, everyone. Exhale from the left nostril. All right? At the end of exhalation, release the hands. All right? That's one cycle of Ujjayi Pranayam. All right? Let me guide you through the whole thing now. Inhale through both the nostrils. Hold the breath, chin down. No breathing. Lift the chin up, use the thumb, right thumb, close the right nostril, exhale from the left side. Release the hands. Deep inhalation, three part inhalation. Hold the breath, chin down to the chest. Lift the chin up, close the right nostril, with the right thumb, exhale, left. Release the hands. One more. Inhale. Deep inhalation. Full three-part inhalation. Hold the breath. Chin down to the chest. Resting on the sternum. Lift the chin up. Hold the right nostril. Exhale from the left side. Keep doing a couple more breaths on your own now. Feel the energy. Feel the flow of breath. Same rhythm. Deep breaths, very deep, ujjayi breaths, full three part breathing. We'll finish the next round. Finish the final exhalation through the left side and release the hands and get your breathing back to your natural rhythm now. Right? That's the Ujjayi Pranayama. That's the name of this technique. Okay? Now, finally, we'll do the, the alternate Nostril breathing, same thing, Vishnu Mudra with the right hand, Chin Mudra with the left. We go through two or three rounds together, two rounds together. Close the right nostril with the right thumb. Start by exhaling from the left. Inhale through the left nostril. Close the left, exhale from the right side. Inhale through the right. Hold the right with the thumb. Exhale through the left. Inhale left. Hold the left. Exhale right and continue. So the guideline is, these are deep, soft, complete three-part breaths. Ujjayi sound, Ujjayi breath. Soft sound, not much, not much sound, much, not too loud at all. Now here we are going to introduce this ratio of one to two now. So keep a count in your mind for every breath. Count om one, om two, om three, om four, etc. Each is roughly one second. Maintain a count. Make an assessment of how long your inhalation is, how long your exhalation is. 
And over time, build the ratio one to two. That means your exhalation becomes longer, eventually twice as long as the inhalation. So keep that count in mind. And continue this practice by feeling the exhalation getting longer, okay? You're not comfortable, Alex? Not comfortable? Just a moment. Okay, just take it easy, yeah. Let's finish the next round. Take your time. Finish the final sequence with the exhalation through the left side. That will complete the final round and then release the hands at the end of that whole sequence. Where is, where is the friction here, is it? Friction is, on friction is the base of the throat. Any deep breathing practice, friction happens at the base of the throat, which is the ujjayi breathing technique, ujjayi sound, always. Long breath, deep breaths, ujjayi sound. Short breaths, fast breaths, nasal sound. Very key guideline. Okay. okay, close the eyes, sit up straight. Before we close the whole sequence, a reminder, Tomorrow, Saturday, we'll stay back after the class, after 7.30 for introductions. Okay, we'll get to know everybody. It's very, very enjoyable. We will love hearing everyone's introduction. Stay back. And on Sunday, after the class, breakfast. Okay, so bring your food. <laughs> All right. How many of you are planning to come for breakfast? I hope everyone, very nice. And I'm sure people online, those who are local, uh, please absolutely come. Okay, Malika, Arjun, Manisha, everyone. Krish, I know Keshni cannot. <laughs> Nirupma cannot. Okay, so there are a few people who are out. Rasika, please come. All right, everyone, Sandeep, everyone. Please come for breakfast, all right? Close the eyes, keep the eyes nicely, softly closed, spine upright, tall and vertical, but relaxed. Shoulders nice and loose, hands comfortable. Let's recite all once now, deep inhalation. Oh. Join the palms together, Shanti Mantra, inhale. Oh. Lead me from unreal to the real, darkness to light, from the fear of death, knowledge of immortality. Peace, peace. Arms briskly. Cover the eyes softly with the palms. Just relax in the eyes.
these pounds on the palms again, raise them up. Exhale, bending forward. Shri Guru Pyo Namaha. I bow down to all my gurus, my teachers. Good, come back up. Thank you. Excuse me. I don't want to go. They have a wonderful rest.